Adrian Mateos already at his third final table in four events. Andrew Moreno has also returned for another shot at the trophy. But it's Anthony Hu, a two-time Poker Masters final table list with over a third of the chips in play. The war for event four at the 2023 Poker Book Cup will end tonight. Welcome back to Las Vegas. My name is Remco Rinkema, joined by Donnie Peters, as always, for a one-hour free preview of Event 4 of the 2023 PokeGo Cup. It is a 10K buy-in. We're coming at you from the PokeGo studio just a few minutes away from the Aria Resort and Casino Poker Room. Thank you all so much once again for joining us here on this YouTube stream. Let us know where you're watching from in the chat. Let us know who you're rooting for. And we'll do some giveaways here in over the course of the next hour. Brent Hanks and Jeff Platt, the real professionals, are on the call on PokerGo.com. If you want to watch it all on PokerGo, you can do so right now as well. Use promo code PGCUP23 to save $20 on your annual subscription. And that, of course, also gives you access to our entire library of content. Here's a look at our chip count. Anthony Hu, like I said, he is the overwhelming chip leader with 3.3 million coming into this final table. But there he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Eric Seidel in second place. Then we have Andrew Moreno, Adrian Mateos, Justin Saliba, and Calvin Lee. Our short stack with 13 big blinds. 78 entries, 12 players finished in the money, and the final six are now guaranteed $46,800 after they already went past that min cash mark of 15,600. The eventual winner takes home $195,000. Let's get those cards in the air, ladies and gentlemen. We're playing for the Big Cup, and here's a look at our current standings. Action at Sebesta and Sean Winter at the top of the standings with 216 points. Aram Zobian, also one of our winners of the first three events with 208. And then Kerry Katz and Kristen Foxen, also in the top four. Shulman and Foxen, so Alex Foxen, that is, in also in awesome. the top five. So you don't really need to do much. Here it is, cards in the air. Jax for Lee, our short stack on the very first right, hand. I'll take 30 seconds every decision, you know. <laughs> I'll count my chips out, yeah. ask for accounts. Let's see if he's going to jam right away or perhaps put in a small nice. raise. The rule yeah, is always 50, the same huh? here on our free previews. Yeah, when we hit 500 likes, we're going to give away a free annual subscription. Keep you guys motivated. Keep you on your you toes. <laughs> and Andrew Moreno, Donnie, has added okay. sunglasses to his repertoire. I must say that the bandana, the beard, and the sunglasses are really creating quite the uh, character here at yeah. the table. Anthony Hu also added the sunglasses. I think they went to the same store. <laughs> it's bright up there. It is very bright. You've played up there. I've played up there. Those lights are no joke. Lee raises to 100K. Seidel and Hu both make the call. Got some three-way action here. All red cards. And Jack, 8, 10 rolls off the deck. Open like, and then uh, straight draw for Seidel. Like Top set here so for Lee. Kind of like Perfect spot here. Him being on the short stack. So you just like get into a fight with your girl or something. You just like just grab some some shuffling chips. chips. Like, I have right back. Go grab some chips. Just <laughs> okay, wait. What do you want to do again? <laughs> Just start shuffling. Yeah, it's like therapeutic a little bit. Yeah. Even the sound, I mean, it's like raindrops. Yeah. Lee continues for 100K. Serious draw here for Seidel. Donnie, in a situation like this where your opponent is fairly shallow, are we leaning to getting it in or folding versus calling and seeing a turn card and as I said that Seidel puts in enough to put Lee on. at risk on and a call Seidel putting Lee at risk but Lee has top set great spot for him to double up Seidel looking for an ace or a nine eight outs twice I'll take that deal <laughs> a little sip of green tea there for the legend Wearing a, uh, a sweater yeah, that says the old man. Early. Oh, he nice. took it to heart. He's like, I need to like show up. No. I need to get all in first hand. 10 or 8? No. 6-4. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good. Turn card. 10 of spades. That seals it right away. Full house for Lee, who gets a quick double up here on hand number one of this final table. Donnie, what, what more can you tell us about the dynamics of this final table, perhaps some storylines that you're looking for, uh, or just in general, you know, the, the fact that Andrew Mateos is here for his third one. 
Well, I'm, I'm liking the fact that Anthony Hu is here and with the chip lead because there was a stream that you and I did last year where I said who is going to be the next breakout on the PGT. So hopefully this result can kind of push my agenda further. I'm all about my own agendas here and them coming through. So we'll see if that happens. And then this is sort of when the race for the cup overall like really heats up, takes off, whatever you want to call it. Lots of people here at this final table can really put themselves in contention. Adrian Mateos can move to the top spot on the leaderboard, of course, independent of other results. Um, I believe it's if he finishes in the top four, so he doesn't have to go too far um, based on the stuff that he's already done. Uh, Andrew Moreno having already one final table under his belt, as you mentioned. Um, with a win, he can go to the top of the leaderboard. Anthony Hu has already had some results. He can also go to the top of the leaderboard. And then Calvin Lee, I think, has won cash earlier. He can also move to the top of the leaderboard. So our, you know, going into like this back half, we just had a day off. You know, we're coming into the home stretch. This is the final 10K, and then today kicks off a 15K as we get into the higher buy-ins. You know, I'm just really eyeing the leaderboard overall, and there's a lot of implications at this final table. Yeah, as, as a bit of a nerd myself, when it comes to standings and analytics and statistics, I love these, you know, event series where you have a 10 or 12 events, and we're all racing for a leaderboard. And of course, the epic conclusion of the Pokego Cup is going to be in event number eight when the 50K awards extra points. Uh, but it is so much fun to see who puts himself in a position to ultimately battle for that 50K cash prize bonus at the end of the whole ride. And of course, that extremely heavy cup that has been sitting on the main stage here. <coughs> Darla in the chat says, come on, everyone, click the like button. Let's damn, go. Damn right, Darla. Appreciate you encouraging <laughs> the crowd. Here's a look at our chip denominations. Blue 5Ks, purple 25Ks, and the yellow ones are 100K. You got 700, Justin? 780. More likes, more giveaways, people. Let's go. Azza says, how was the food on Saturday? Can't remember the name of the restaurant. And I'm from the UK, so I don't know LA. Well, a few corrections back, there. Right? We were in uh, Las Vegas. 730 back. <laughs> okay, 780. Yeah. And the restaurant is called Herbs and Rye. Looked and good. I saw the photos. It was fantastic. I, now I'm even closer to going back to meat now. <laughs> I'm, I'm like just about there. Oh, you keep posting photos of steaks. Yep. I'm going I'm to be there by the end of the week. You got it. <laughs> you got it. No, it was really good. Great cocktails too. They do their cocktails by the era. So they have like the Prohibition era, the, really? goth the Gothic era. Um, a whole bunch of different Where's vibes. Where's Herbs and Rye? It's on the Sahara and Valley View, not too far from the studio. Here's a look at the uh, walk-ins of some of the players. Calvin Lee trying to keep his hair dry. <laughs> Andrew Moreno, if, if he was wearing a different outfit, he could be just, you know, walking, coming off the streets. Justin Saliva, well prepared for the occasion. Adrian Mateos doesn't shy away from the rain. He lives in London. Eric Seidel, the only poker player to own a coat. And there comes Anthony Hu. The thing is, the other day, Anthony Hu had a nice really long coat on yeah but he didn't bring it today no you gotta <laughs> it's pouring rain outside <laughs> it is funny how living in las vegas uh, does make you forget that you should own a coat for when it does get cold it's or been rainy. raining for six days in a row though. yeah it's pretty pretty depressing. every day i wake up i'm like it's still cloudy what's happening yeah, it's unbelievable have you been able to ride i have been skipping rides because i just it's mostly the wind actually that's the biggest issue yeah it was so windy yesterday it was unbelievable our dog almost flew away. <laughs> Who with the race here? 9-7 offsuit. Moreno in the big blind considering defending. This is a battle of the sunglasses. Which ones do you want, Donnie? The, 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 the blue round ones? Or I guess are those round as well? I think they're round. The blue ones give me some uh, Stu Unger vibes. Yeah. I and I believe those are the same blue ones that he won the win millions wearing. Wow. So maybe uh, some superstition there, you know, going I back to the well. I have a pair of circular, circular Ray-Bans that I should break out for the summer as well. They do look very Stu Unger. Stu Unger meets Greg Raymer. <laughs> we need someone to wear the snake eyes on the yeah, that'd on be, a final table. That'd be hilarious. Jimmy Bluffett in the chat. Appreciate you moderating as always. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We've got Albuquerque, New Mexico in the house. Hope the weather is a little better over there. LFA says he just finished 10th 
on GG Poker. One spot from the final table, it hurts. We've all been there, man. Keep on trucking. Don't give up. Potential, potential blind battle developing here as Moreno makes it 70K from the small blind. Mateos, quick gander over at the stack sizes of his opponents, and there he is all in with ace high. Mateos is shoved down for just <laughs> about 22 big blinds. He wanted to make sure the RFID got that one. Huh? He wanted to make sure the RFID got that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get the seven do so. Yeah. <laughs> Mateo's at his third final table of the Poker Go Cup. Crushing. Poker's all luck, except for when your name is Adrian Mateos. <coughs> He's so good. <laughs> it's, it's quite silly. Oh, yeah, this is good. Let us know what the weather is and where you're watching from. <laughs> we always ask where you're watching from, but instead, let's just do what's the weather like where you're watching from. Of course, you guys are all inside watching the stream, but maybe open those blinds every now and then to see what's going on in the world. You hear the Negron tackle in the background. Good reminder for me to tell you that PGT.com has live reporting of event number five going on right now. A 15K no limit hold'em. Probably the only 15K tournament all year round. It's not a very common buy-in level. Well, we have a few of them. Yeah, we have a few yeah. of them. You know, it is, it is a kind of a wacky buy-in level, but it works, you know. I do think that the fields narrow a little bit as the buy-ins go up, so our chances at a star at final table with the likes of Daniel Negreanu, perhaps with Phil Hellmuth, are increasing by the day because we got, I believe we got two 15Ks, then two. One. One 15K, and then two 25Ks. And then a 50. And then a 50K, that's it, that's what's up. And I believe Mr. Hellmuth tweeted that he's going to be here for the 15K. I'll believe it when I see it. Look, look for him when registration closes, <laughs> like right at the end there. Coming in right at the end. Action on Moreno, 7-6 suited. Tosses him in the muck. Always painful to have to fold that hand, but yeah, I never do. <laughs> <laughs> never. Mateos with King Nine suited on the button. Reminder for everyone in the chat: 500 likes on the video, we give away a free annual subscription. Same rules every day. We didn't get there on Saturday. I think we ended at like 400 or something. People are slacking. Slacking off. Randall says, sleet slash freezing rain in Canada. Oh, man. Eric Bergeron says, it's one degree Fahrenheit outside. <laughs> Where do you live, Antarctica? Probably North Dakota or something. Good Lord. Minnesota, maybe. <laughs> Queen Jack, eight on the flop, two clubs, 275 in the middle. Who with the best hand? However, also one diamond. I would not feel comfortable playing out of position three streets against Adrian Mateos. Eric Bergeron, Northern Quebec. That sound. Even just saying it makes me feel cold. Gut shot straight draw and back of flush draw for Mateo, so not completely firing without hope here on the flop. Oh, wow. Explain this one, Donnie. So Mateos looked like he sized it up a little bit there from what you kind of normally see. Draw heavy board, going to be tough playing out of position, as you mentioned, against a player of Adrian Mateos' caliber. You know, I think Anthony Hu just kind of went with one of those. I don't want to put myself in really tough spots on future streets. Folds. <laughs> right. Just eliminating some headaches. I mean, turn comes, you know, it's a straight card. Let's say it's the four of clubs. I mean, you're just you're going to play a giant guessing game for a lot of chips at a really big spot at this final table, so. Also good recognition there by Mateos. Not that we should expect anything less where he did size up that flop a little bit as opposed to just going with, let's say, you know, 25, 30%, something like that. Maybe that allows who to come along. Moreno here with a very pretty looking ace queen suited. I love the sweatshirt from Mr. Seidel. Old man. Low, low key, like, <laughs> Brings the style game, you know, oh, like yeah. you, you wouldn't think it, but he does. He's got the dad hat kind of just like to the side, you know, he's got the old man. 
sweatshirt. Well, you know what he listens to, right? That when sweatshirt it, looks like it's brand new, by the way. You know what he listens to, right? I, I mean, I think he listens to everything. Well, yeah, but he's, he's a, a renaissance. He's fan. a huge hip hop fan. Yeah. Fifty well, Cent, The Game, Eminem, he's the best. Outkast, some of Eric Seidel's favorites, according to an interview that I read with him a long time ago. Man of the arts. Exactly. Nice looking flop, flop here for Moreno. Lots of potential. Not much out there for Seidel though. We got a wide range of temperatures in the chat. Lots of rain though. Lots of rain. Nobody watching from Asia or Australia with some sunny weather. Except for Shrey, who says, hello from India. I don't know how you guys survive at the degree. <coughs> it's 16 Celsius in Mumbai, and it feels so chilly. <laughs> 16 Celsius, I think that's about maybe seven, 70 I'm, American. I'm, making it, I'm officially going to say this is our new thing. When we start off the <laughs> chats, I want location, I want weather, and I want to know what you're drinking. Exactly. Oh, right, at the, right at the beginning. It's, it's our version of ASL. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at the Aussies waking up, sunny in Brisbane. <laughs> Good day, mate. Good day, Cameron. I wish I was good at doing accents. Argentina in the house. It's about it's a it's that time of year when I always think it's January. I miss the Aussie Millions. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, mean, I saw that the Australian Open just got underway. Yeah. And you and I, Donnie, it's a bummer. Have had a chance to attend and and have also been in the city when the events going on in general. Great vibes. Some of my best memories of covering poker tournaments back in the day. In my 20s, feels like a long time ago, <laughs> uh, in Australia. Yeah, we're old now. We're old and we don't travel anymore. <laughs> People have to come to us. Fair fight here, Donnie, between 10-8 and 10-8. Oh. Give the slight nod to who with the position. Jack 6-5 Jack, Jack is the poker holding equivalent of 10-8 offsuit. Nice 71 degrees in North Texas. Lithuania in the house. We got Switzerland, cold and rainy day. Shout out Trey, he's back. 50 and sunny in the DMV. Love seeing everyone in the chat. Love the community that we have here during our little hour of fun here on YouTube. We're gonna keep this going for the next few days, like I said before. We got two we got a 15k tomorrow, then two 25ks and a 50k. If you want to watch these full final tables. Check out PokerGo.com. Use promo code PGCUP23 to save $20 on your annual subscription. And, and then you get Brent Hanks and Jeff Platt on the call, which, of course, massive upgrade. Action full tier to Seidel. I am, I am really hoping that Helmy shows up today. I, I, know he, I know he tweeted it, but we just got to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great to have him out there. I mean, the word on the street before the series was that he was going to play a bunch of these. We haven't seen him yet. He put it out there in the universe, though, so he can't be lying to the people. As we see Anthony Hu attack here. Calvin Lee behind with pocket eights. Wow. Gives it up. Is, th is that a bit too conservative given his stack size, or, or is the, the three betting range consideration here from Hu? Has to be a little bit tighter than uh, than eight, than for eights to be a favorite. Yeah, these tables are pretty big. I mean, it's just help you out. it's hard to play a hand like eights here I when you have Justin well. Saliba on um, now approaching ten, 10 big years. lines, eleven big lines. Uh, and then I've been bouncing around kind of part time here for the last like six years. <laughs> in San Diego. Uh, I'm right now I'm on the road. Not My wife and I control. have all our stuff in storage. Jack is uh, underrated. But uh, yeah, we're gonna settle in Austin. In nice. March. That's great. Man. I love Austin. Who with a six flops the nuts okay, for his hand? Back to I mean, honestly, straight really flush for I, I have family there. Um, I'll probably still travel a lot. Living in Southern California for travel is not great. I'm yeah. mostly in Southern California, so. Uh, yeah, Seidel so far has seen his share of flops has not connected and has been totally willing to just let it go. Um, does mean that so. he's down a ton of chips here. Yeah, early. it is. I don't think it's almost home yet. You know, 
Goes so down, down here every half year. a stack. Yeah. I feel like people generally outgrow Here's it. Anthony Lou's come here for bio. Twenty third on Minnesota's um, all time money list. The only list that matters long term. Yeah. in the world of poker. <laughs> Came very close to winning. You want a family? A World Series poker bracelet. I mean, I know you Not a fan a of the here, the so. state specific all time Probably money list, places. just because yeah. these guys all sure. don't live there anymore. Oh, oh, right, right. Like it's just. But you got to represent the hometown. I mean, no. Would you rather say like he is uh, 553rd on the, the overall? No, I, I would just find something else to put there. Put put the U.S. All put time Donnie list? Peters' prediction as breakout player of the year on the PGT. You can put that. <laughs> But yes, yeah, big down big in the first few minutes here. Down 1.2 million. His chips, of course, have gone all over the table so far. The lead the big winner with an early double up. Mateos also up a little bit. Saliba planned that Nick Schulman game. Very One of the things I miss about Vegas is just being able to get like get into anything, any day, any time, or like just food. Yeah. Everything closes at like 10 in the real world, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's nice. You should be like, all right, I'm going to have a nice meal at 2 in the morning. Exactly, yeah. Jack Walker, Walker asks, is this live? No, it's not live. <laughs> I'm, I'm, reading, I'm reading your comment from the past. It's actually 2017 in, here in my universe. We are doing a one-hour free preview today, so in 40 minutes we'll send you over to PokerGo.com if you feel so inclined. We have monthly, quarterly, and annual subscriptions available. Interesting spot here. Mateo's finding ace-king in the small blind. Could just put this in. Twenty-five bigs, two shorter stacks. Yeah. There it goes. There it is. Moves I got one right. <coughs> Finally. Finally got one right. <laughs> Only took me four events. Finally get one right. Dika Costa, no. Uh, Johnny Vibes, a.k.a. Johnny Moreno, Andrew's brother, is not here at the studio. I believe he's in San Diego area at an MSPT event down there. You know, I, I like Mateos. He, he stacks his chips in 20s, and then the ones on top, he breaks down into easily countable sub-stacks. It's great. I think he's been yelled at by Sean Winter once too many. <laughs> Sean Winter always right knowing oh, exactly how many chips he has, oh, they both it down. as a count but also in big blinds. I guess we announce number of fans anyway. So doesn't, doesn't yeah. really When you guys tune into the stream, are you always rooting for some big shot player that you see, or are you more of an underdog type fan? I mean, I'm bringing this up specifically because Ed Sebesta, you know, spoiler alert for everyone who hasn't seen it yet, he crushed the high roller pros at the event three final table. He is now at the top of the current standings. Uh, here's a look at the current situation in Las Vegas. It is <laughs> pouring rain outside, but that's a better reason to sign up for Poker Go because you got to get ready for Season 10 of High Stakes Poker. Use promo code WATCHHSP10 for $20 off the sub. New episodes premiering January 24th. Weekly new episodes. I think we've got at least 14 of those coming at you. we got Person. we got Nebrano, Esfandiari. we got J JRB in the mix. Jennifer Tilly is playing. we got tons of new faces as well, including Bobby Baldwin that Donnie already told us about a couple days ago. It's going to be a great season. I can't wait. Timothy Han, Han says, raining in the desert? Yes, it's been raining for the last six days, on and off. I mean, we're, we're not being sarcastic. It's been raining for six days. <laughs> it snowed a little bit last night. I went to the snore store Sorry, uh, about 9, 9 p.m., and it was cold enough that, that that rain turned into little snowflakes. Yeah, when I left the house to go to the studio, it was hailing outside. Jeez. Blind battle here between Hu and Lee.
Eric Bergeron, we stream all of our majors and the WSP on Poker Go. Everything there is available in full and also on demand. So if you missed anything in the past, such as the recent PGT Championship from the end of last season, you guys can go back and watch all of that sort of stuff on demand on Poker Go. And what I like to do, and I know I know you do the same thing, Donnie. I like rewatching all the old stuff. We've been gathering and collecting and dusting off a lot of old poker shows. Yeah, so Brian Buster just the bar like. I like to just throw on the O4 yeah. main event, for example. Yeah, that's what I was like. The old stuff is great, of course. Timothy nice said, any free sub giveaways? Nice. Yes, yeah. you got to get yeah, the 500 right likes, there, and, and Remco's going to give one away. It's very easy. It's very tell, your, tell your friends to like the video. Let's go. Tell your mom to watch. See, look, man, you're putting in some effort with the... We're, we're being entertaining each other, at least. <laughs> Who bet 100k on the flop? Lee made the Tardy call. Too much who now, like so. perhaps looking to shut it down? A little, little, little doesn't 50. Not completely. Oh, 250. Nice play here from Lee, Donnie. Good recognition there. Let's see if I can find something creative. It's definitely there. Camille, we choose winners by the chat. Remco does a random drawing. You have to be a <coughs> subscriber to the YouTube channel in order to chat. And he asks a question. You guys put an answer in. He draws a winner. So after you smash that like button, make sure you are a subscriber to this channel. I feel like Camille knew that because I've seen his name in the chat before. Welcome back, Camille. I Thanks mean, it's, it's good in. to prompt me to remind people to subscribe. Absolutely. That is a fact. Lee, meanwhile, started the day as the short stack, now up to 1.8 million and second in chips behind only Anthony Hu, who he has direct position on. So, yep. not a bad day so far for Calvin Lee. Calvin Lee, a bracelet winner, I believe. I think it was a 3K6 max, I want to say, from a few years ago. I think so, 2016, I believe. Love seeing aces as a short stack for Saliba. I love seeing aces in general. <laughs> I'm not very picky when I get aces, Donnie. Can't be. You don't get them too often, so you shouldn't be picky. Saliba, of course, trying to run through some ideas on how to extract the most out of Anthony Hu, whose range, of course, going to be very fairly wide. Given Saliba's chip stack, he hopes that Hu flops something like this. Here we go. To potentially get his chips in the middle. Let the money will go in here. A little bet, a little check or jam. Saliba. Saliba. Call? Saliba is so short. Any merit here to who to pick up a free card? Because he might assume that Saliba's range is so strong that he might be far behind. Uh, I, think you, I think you just take the, the opportunity to bet and possibly take it down as well, you know, without having to go to showdown or anything like that. I mean, we know Saliba obviously has a big hand, but... I don't think it's too crazy for even really short stacks to to peel. Um, I think you see that a little bit more often at these these high rollers. So you wow. know, if Saliba was peeling with a hand like a, a Jack Ten, etc. You know, who definitely wants to bet and just get him off that? Potentially bad card for Saliba's action. Saliba started this hand with only ten big blinds. Still gonna keep betting. Looks like 100k again. Very cautious play from Saliba. Now, do you like the line he's choosing here? I mean, I think he's just trying to extract max value. You know, if if, if we know, and if he also recognizes that that who with the chip lead is opening kind of wider. You know, Saliva with aces is a little bit more willing to play it slow in order to get maximum value from who. I mean, there are definitely going to be some times when Saliba shoves preflop and he gets a fold. You know, so just calling preflop, you know, now led to the situation. I think the board, the 
board is still all right for his hand. Might be a little bit telling here, though, if he does just call. <laughs> but we'll see. And there it is. Looks like 205 behind still. Queen on the river. Saliba so short now that who might be wondering, do I have any fold equity here? It's a tough spot for who here, as you mentioned. Probably doesn't think he has too much fold equity given how short Saliba's got, but also knows that he probably can't win with nine high. <laughs> it's just, he does just give it up. You guys in the <laughs> chat, let us know. How would you have played your pocket aces there? Pre-flop shove, check raise all in on the flop, check raise all in on the turn. All those things are options. Let us know what you would have done. Saliba here picking up the first hand of his final table. Brings him back up to what he started with. Eric Sedell now, the short stack at the final table. Both him and Saliba have 16 big blinds. Very well done by Saliba there. Let's see what the chat says. Oh, wow, Donnie, what does this mean? This is, this is some very intense stuff. This is brand new to us. I mean, VPIP voluntarily put money into pot. PFR, plea for op raise. Three bet, I'm assuming, is three bet percentage. I mean, you think they could have prepped us on that? Did someone install, <laughs> did someone install <laughs> poker office? Poker tracker. Well, the OG poker office. Yes. Poker office. Yeah. What was the other one? Hold the manager. Hold the manager. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's look at the chat here. Um, I'm seeing shove turn, all in flop, check raise jam, post flop, pre flop shove, shove post. Jack Walker says Saliba played it perfectly. Shove pre. I love that everyone has a different response to this question. This is why poker is so great. It's not like chess, where you know just all, there's only like one right move. Everyone's saying turn, but but that's only because they can see the cards, LOL, says someone in the chat that has two um, two Korean marks that I cannot pronounce. I would have shouted you out, but I, I don't know how to say those things. Um, Ace-10-8 on the flop here between Lee and Hu, once again battling. Lee making life a lot more difficult from Hu just because he's on his direct right with a lot more chips than he had before. Today says he got max value with his aces. Well, he might have gotten called on the all-in shove on the flop, but of course that's being a little results-oriented, given that we know that who has had an open in the straight draw. Lee tosses in a bet and takes this one down. Julia says, I, I just came here to win some random prize. Do you guys give away something? Well, you better stick around to find out. But first, just like the video because we got to get the 500 likes first. You guys got about half an hour left. Pretty quiet final table today. Not a lot of chatter going on. I can't stop thinking about Ed Sebesta, Donnie. What a, what a win that was. Yeah, Ed Sebesta, 78 or 79 years old. I um, believe he started playing in his 70s, so he hasn't been playing his whole life. Um, got into poker as a hobby. He is retired. I think he sold a successful RV business. Really? And uh, he Le plays for kind of a, a higher meaning. So his son passed away in 2012 um, as a result of a brain tumor. His son was a priest um, under the, the Holy Cross organization. And as a result now, and, and being successful and not needing to worry about money, um, Ed plays poker as a hobby and donates all of his winnings to the Holy Cross. Wow. That's a fantastic story. Yeah, he won a, uh, I think he won a, a seminal hard rock high roller last year for 311 k and then just event for three years. Here's a look at Eric Seidel, his run of the last five years. This guy just doesn't stop winning. Total up to $42.2 million in last year. Back with a vengeance after a few quiet ones. 3.7 million in the bank for Mr. Seidel. One of the best of all time who is not talked about nearly enough, Donnie. No, no. He's, he's up there. Just 
an absolute legend who you know stays up with the times and still battles with these young these younger <laughs> guys these these kids these days it's not easy to do that it's very impressive how old is Eric Seidel? I'm going to Google that. I'm going to say 58. I was going to go 62. 63. Okay. Eric Seidel, 63. Such an imp impressive resume. We'll see how he fares on this one. Though he flops top pair out of position against Calvin Lee, who flops the nut flush draw. Check from Seidel. Min bet from Lee. Min bet or mini bet? <laughs> Depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Seidel started this hand with 18 big blinds. Just makes the call. Nine on the turn. Seidel still best. Meanwhile... Madeline says, Rice and Tatum, loving the stream. We love Poker Go. Go Saliba. Love to hear it. Is it Rice or Reese? I don't know how to pronounce that. R-H-Y-S. Good question. It's a fancy name. Good choice, Madeline. I like it. Lee's flush comes in on the river. Action was checked on the turn by both players, and side out checks the river. See what sizing Lee wants to go with. What a rough day for X Idell. It doesn't look too scary when you only throw out four chips, but <laughs> if Eric Idell keeps losing him in this at this rate, he's gonna be out the door real soon. Seidel does make the call. This is going to be costly again. Lee shows the nut flush. Seidel mucks, mucks his top pair. And all of a sudden, Eric Seidel down to below 10 big blinds. And Lee is just unstoppable, Donnie. Up to 2.4 million chips. Closing in on the chip lead. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, man. Just tuning in. This is the event four final table of the 2023 PokeGo Cup. It was a 10K buy-in, 78 entries, Hello. just shy of 200K for the winner today. We have daily streams on our YouTube channel all the way through Thursday. Did you watch our Classico? Oh. Friday, Did you watch actually. Our Classico? Second bar on the second bar. Yeah, very yeah, good. Did you watch it? Just the highlights. It's too early. Yeah, when I wake up, it's second half. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little back and forth there between Saliba and Mateos. Uh, Mateos, I believe. Do you prefer one of the teams? What? Do you support one of the teams? I support Atletico de Madrid. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. I prefer Barcelona over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Seidel, meanwhile, all in with ace three offsuit, and I was just going to say, I believe Mateos is from Madrid, so I wouldn't be surprised that he was a Real fan. But of course, Atletico also an option. And then all of a sudden, you much rather watch Barcelona win. <coughs> It'd be fun if we did an event where you had to you had to wear the jersey of the team you support the most, whatever sport. I like it. Be pretty cool to do that maybe for charity events. Um, here's a look at the all-time money list. Mr. Eric Seidel currently in sixth place with 42.2 million. Of course, bottom on Kenny still in that entanglement for the top spot. But with every month that passes, the likes of a Negrano Chibikun and even a Seidel get closer and closer to that 50 million a dollar mark as well. And there it is at the bottom of the counts. Mr. Phil Ivey now back in the top 10 after a few down years. He had a real good one in 2022. Eric Seidel and Jason Kuhn, very good friends. Uh, when Jason won the PGT Championship to close out last season, he mentioned how um, 
Eric's been kind of a mentor through him throughout uh, his poker career. And he actually leapfrogged Eric so on the all-time money list that we just saw. If Eric wins this event, though, he'll take that, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that spot back um, and move back Isn't into fifth yeah. place. Oh, back agreed. ahead of Mr. Kuhn. Yeah, he's big. Ball till he falls. Says, Where's the greatest player ever, a.k.a. A Phil Helmuth? Well, he's, he been, he's been dropping like hard on the all-time money list. Like <laughs> Just because he doesn't play the high rollers as frequently as the other players do. Yeah. Here's a look at event number five. I see Dan Shack, Daniel Legrano, Dan Smith among the players in the crowd. Orpen is back. Rampage Poker playing the 15K. Andrew Lucky Chewy Lichtenberger. So funny, a uh, funny bet between. I see Orpin out there. Uh, I see Nick Petrangelo. So they have a little side wager. Oh. On six, seven, most five, points five. in this series, loser has to pay for the private jet to the Bahamas. Wow, <laughs> that's not a cheap bet. <laughs> that is not a cheap bet. And I believe yeah, Orpin. The other, the other day they were on the bubble. Corpin was already out of the tournament, but Nick Petrangelo was still in, and you know Nick was talking about it, about how the bubble mean, <laughs> means a lot to him because if he gets in the money and gets those points, he can move back ahead of Orpin oh, man. on the Poker Girl Cup leaderboard. So, never a dull moment with nope. these guys in the crowd. Never a dull moment. Did you know there's a thousand calories in one nine inch Capriotti's Bobby sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I might have taken the over. Yeah, I'm actually, yeah, I'm, I'm, I might have said like 1400. Right. Is, an, is the nine inch the single serving or the double? The double, right? It's like the two. Did you have one today? Well, no, they were out there. Yeah. And I was thinking, I need to know the calorie count. And if, there's a th if there are a thousand calories, I should not eat those. <laughs> it's not in the budget. Seeing some it would be in the budget if it was sunny outside. Yes. Because then you would you would have already burned like four thousand calories. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Seeing some Korean chatter in the chat. Love to see it. And I'm assuming those are Calvin Lee fans. Calvin Lee originally from South Korea. Queen five four, two spades on the flop. Who with the spades? And the best high card. Yes, I am, Deke. Ramco and I both are <laughs> on our weight loss wager again. Third, a fourth or third? A tradition as old as time. New year, <laughs> new yeah. weight loss. Time. Twenty. <laughs> yeah, it's, a th it's a third straight year. 2020, uh, 2021, 2022. Third straight year. This one ends on June 1st. Are you on track, Donnie? Yeah, I'm on track. Are you feel are, good? Are you as on track as you were last year in the first month? Uh, I think I'm ahead. Yeah. I think I'm doing better. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, Donnie and I have an interesting relationship with food. I mean, it's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> you know how Phil Ivey said the cash just looks so sweet? That's, that's my <laughs> opinion about anything that's edible. The food just looks so good. The food just looks so good. Pizza, pasta, pastries. I'm Th guessing Anthony Hu is going to open this hand, and I feel like he's opened every hand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Hu has won eight hands so far. At his final table. They showed the, the VPIP stat earlier. I think he was at 67%. That's got to be pushing 70 now. That's incredible. But this is, I mean, this is what a chip leader is supposed to do. <laughs> totally. Put your opponents in tough spots. Let them deal with the pressure of the ICM. And hopefully you can run away with it. It, it is fun to see you know, someone like Ali and, and a who, as the newer faces, uh, really making their mark at these final tables. People often criticize the high roller community as it being a small world, uh, but do, we do see an influx of new players uh, every single year. Yeah, I think I would include Andrew Reno in that. hasn't played in the studio until this series, yeah, but 400. Yeah. posted on Instagram that he's kind of taken a shot this year and wants to battle with these guys. So it's good to see him out here taking some swings as well. If you're just tuning in, when we hit 500 likes on the video, we're giving away a free annual subscription to PokerGo valued at $100. Clearly a great deal for you guys. 
bang, bang. Oh, look, Anthony Hu just races again. <laughs> just, I don't even know why he's looking at his cards anymore. There's just no point. I've seen him raise everything from, what, he's had, he had 4-3 suited one time. He had 9-7 off. Like he's, just, he's always in there. Moreno verifying his own count. He's going to figure out that he has 20 big blinds oh. left. Tied <laughs> with Mateos ahead of Seidel and Saliba. He moves all in. Donnie, do you think it's a smart move given the aggression that who is showing? However, still considering that there's three stacks shorter than him. Yeah, I think it, it shuts out a lot of hands that who <coughs> can have, you know, makes him, puts him in a tougher spot to call. <coughs> a standard three bet from Moreno there might open him up to a four bet jam against who, who is, you know, I think we can already say given how he's been playing so far that he's willing to put the pressure of his big stack on the other players at the table. So. Moreno's just going to take that ability away from who and just move all in. Mm. Action on Saliba here. Queen Jack suited under the gun. Sorry, under the gun plus one. AKA the hijack. Darius says, <laughs> that dude looks like he's wearing a fake beard. Well, we can confirm it is not fake real as they come. Saliba with one of these committing raises you often see at these final tables. Moreno gave it a a few extra seconds before folding fives and oh. there is uh -oh. pocket queens for Eric Seidel. Moves all in. Oh, this is not what Saliba wants to see. Who folded quickly. Saliba is going to make the call. He was committed already. The worst possible situation for Saliba. What he basically has to hope for is hearts a or a straight. Right here. Because it's when it be comes to pairs, one. it's going to be really tough. Sweaty one, Eric. Just put the ten of hearts at least on the flop. Yeah. Window it's always a sweat. Okay. <laughs> it's always three, a sweat. Four, it's never four, easy. Ten of hearts. That's, that's not nearly sweaty enough. <laughs> Let's see the flop here. Oh, Ace, that's three, eight. <laughs> that's about as dry as it could get. Some backdoor possibilities, but the hearts are already dead. Turn card, king of diamonds. Okay, we got four outs. Three after subtracting, I guess, one of the cards from the other players at the table. Saliba on his way out the door. Or can he catch up and catch a ten? Of course, the ten of diamonds dead because of Seidel, Ooh. and there's the Ten of Hearts on the river. Justin Saliba. Wow. <laughs> so I mean, it is just not Eric Seidel's day. Pulls it back from the brink of elimination. What an unbelievable river card there. It's incredible. There's going to be some uh, Jeff Platt and B. Hanks excitement there. <laughs> and so are we, Andrew. Yeah, Seven come on, man. Maybe equities are just alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's probable. Wow, just Saliba, almost apologetic with his facial expression about hitting that card versus Eric Seidel. If the math is correct, Seidel left with just 55k. I always feel pretty bad when I deliver a bad beat in live poker. Right. Online, I could give two craps. Right. Like, online, but you're when just you like see <laughs> the person, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you're just like, man. It really hasn't feels, been Eric uh, Seidel's day. He, a little party just on the nothing has worked out for him today. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I like Justin Saliba, but I was rooting for Seidel there. <laughs> As I, I would say, many people were rooting for Seidel there. Also, you just kind of want to root for the best hand. True. You know, also he that. had the best yep. of it. Had a dominating position, but runner, runner straight. Terrible luck there for Eric Seidel, who was down to just 55,000 chips. He doesn't even get registered on the big blind stats. <laughs> That's how short he is. Anthony, who is our chip leader with 56 big blinds, still very comfortably at the top of the standings. Calvin Lee, Andrew Moreno, Justin Saliba, and Adrian Mateos all still in the mix here at this event for final table. There it is, the stub of Seidel, the old man looking to make a comeback. However, Donnie, we've seen plenty of comebacks at the Pokemon Cup so far this year, so let's not count him out yet. Yeah, and he gets a couple free hands. Big blind ante is in play, and he's on the button, so doesn't need to just put it in right now. 
Our stat sheet shows that Seidel has zero big blinds, which is <laughs> really funny. <laughs> the big blind Annie, of course, changing things a little bit. And he gets a perfect spot here on the button. Big move. 55k into the middle. Hello? Calling the big blind, basically. It's a lot. 55. Let's see if who's just going to complete the big blind or whether he's going to put in a race to isolate and get him heads up. Either way, Seidel in a position to possibly triple up, given that he's only got one big blind. Well, quadruple, big blind ante. Yeah, this could be the start of something big. Haven't seen Calvin Lee's cards yet. Really curious. 240. To find out. He makes it 240. Quick toss from Calvin Lee. And we got a heads up showdown here. Eric Seidel only invests 55K, but could win. 230,000, and that will bring him right back into the action. Did see that one of those jacks for who was dead with Calvin Lee folding jack seven. All right, chat, what do we think? Is Seidel going to win this one, or is he going to walk off stage? Let's see the flop. Come on, dude, don't do it to him twice. <laughs> and keep this man alive. Oh, my God, jack nine three. Not even a flush draw. Eric Seidel looking for an ace to stay alive. When it's not your day, it's not your day. Turn card, seven of diamonds, doesn't change a thing. Eric Seidel looking for one of the three remaining aces in the deck where he will be our sixth place finisher. Five of spades yeah. on the river, and Eric yeah. Seidel is eliminated in sixth place. Anthony, who rakes in the last of his chips, and Seidel collects $46,800, and we will likely see him again in the 15K that is underway in the background. You see Daniel Negreanu sitting at one of the outer tables. We've seen some pretty bad performances in terms of just like stuff not going your way at final tables. That was one of the worst I've ever seen. Yes. I mean, just nothing went his way. Came into the final table, second in chips. Basically lost every single important hand and uh, out the door. Remaining five players, guaranteed 62,400. Just about eight minutes left on this free preview stream before we send it over to Pokego.com. We, we do have enough time to hit 500 likes, but you guys got to hurry. When we hit 500 likes on the stream, we will do a giveaway for a free annual subscription of Pokego. I will bet, says, he made the correct, correct moves, though. It was the cards. Okay. Definitely right. It was definitely the cards. First doubling up. Lee on the very first hand. <coughs> King Queen off versus Jax, all in on the Jack 10x flop. Meanwhile, who stays on his raising ways. Makes it 120k from the button. Saliba in the big blind with Ace Queen offsuit. Oh! I guess the chat woke up. <laughs> I guess the chat woke up. It's about time you guys woke up. Jeez. <laughs> Pulling teeth over here. All in. Oh, Justin Saliba with the all in move. Similar spot to what we saw from Andrew Moreno earlier. Just selecting to jam the ace queen off. Even though who has a big chip lead, doubling up any of the players that he's playing against would basically completely <coughs> level the playing field. Here's a look at 2022 of Justin Saliba. 24 caches, three six-figure scores, 1.3 million earnings. On the PGT, however, only 172nd, meaning he did not qualify for the season-ending season championship event. Yeah, Saliba coming off a fifth-place finish at the Borgata in their return event. Uh, won 300K in that uh, just about uh, a week or two ago. A good start to the year. That 300k score at this final table, wherever he results. Matt says that was 200 likes in 10 seconds. That's really That's funny. Great. If only you guys, if you only, if only you guys were that eager, with nothing up for grabs. But yeah, time for the giveaway. The giveaway is always simple. If you're new to the show, whatever you answer to my question, your answer is always right because I will draw a random winner from everyone who submitted their question. Okay, 
My question for today is, who do you think will win the overall PokerGo Cup standings? Ed Sebesta currently at the top of the counts. Aram Zobian, Sean Winter, Alex and Kristen Foxen also near the top. Daniel Legrano, can he make a comeback? Jason Kuhn always shows up late, but will always do well in the high roller events. Or perhaps it's one of the players at this final table. Adrian Mateos is currently one elimination removed from being the leader in the standings. So plenty of names to choose from. Send us your favorite, and I'll pick a random winner. Like I said, no wrong answers. Everyone is entered into the draw. And as, as today said in the chat, get your Excel spreadsheet ready. <laughs> Damn right. Like 1.6. You know who showed back up today? Sean Winter. Sean Winter is back, yeah. He skipped, what, one or two events? No, he skipped uh, two, three, and four. Oh, wow. Looks like a lot of love for Mr. Dan and Legrandu. Yeah, hasn't scored a point yet. <laughs> Actually, no, I think one, he, he one had, mid cash. Well, yeah, one small cash. Yeah, one mid cash. Surprised no one is uh, no one's shouting out Mr. Eric Seidel. I know he had a rough finish to this event, but still a final table appearance, good chunk of points there. And I mean, Mick's going to be out here battling in the rest of these. Nick Petrangelo has a a, a side wager at the price of a private jet flight. So I'm sure he's motivated. Yeah. He's definitely motivated. He, he does not want to have to take on that bill. Well, I mean, what's that cost? 25K? 40K? I, it's, got, it's gotta be something like that, right? It's got private it's jets aren't cheap. It's gotta cost at least a couple thousand per hour. <laughs> and flying from Vegas to Bahamas is probably at least six hours. So you guys did the math at home. I was on a private jet once. What? Once. It, I did not pay a dime. It was an <laughs> invite from a friend. Uh, it went from Vegas to Mexico. Probably, I don't even know, two and a half hour flight, so not that crazy. Yeah. It cost 25K. Wow. So Bahamas is a little bit further of a flight. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's got to cost at least 25. Oh, yeah, ma maybe <laughs> 40 at least. How was it, though? Do you ever want to go back to economy? Oh, it was great. <laughs> I mean, the best part was that you just walk up to, or you get to the airport and you just like walk into the terminal and go on the plane. Like you don't have to do anything. God, it's amazing. I'm jealous. All right, I'll give you guys until the end of this hand to submit your guesses on who's going to win the Poker Go Cup, and then I will draw a winner. And keep in mind, if you are the winner, email social at pokergo.com with a screenshot of you logged into your YouTube account so I can verify, and then we will credit we'll credit you in the next 24 hours with a free annual subscription. By the way, keep liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We've got daily clips coming out. We have s really fun highlights of the Ed Sebesta win in which he beat some of the top pros in the world. And then just quickly before you do the giveaway, that story with Orpin and Nick Petrangelo making it even more interesting or more funny is that uh, at the PGT Championship, Nick Petrangelo and Jason Kuhn were talking about how much of a lighting money on fire it is to book private jets. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Must be nice to have those kinds of conversations. If only we could ever be in their world. Uh, here's a tweet from Amo for show. Andrew Moreno, give him a follow. He says, we got another shot of the title on Monday. The two players on my left have a combined earnings of $72 million. <laughs> it should be a walk in the park. Andrew Moreno himself, by the way, also racking up the millions over the last few years. It'd be funny to see where he stands in five years on it. It would be, yeah. All right, time for the draw. The winner is Ken Owen. Congratulations, Ken Owen. Ken, please send a message or send, send an email to social at pokergo.com. Ken Owen, congrats. You get a free annual subscription to PokerGo. Uh, a hair over, I think. <coughs> See if who wants to ramp up the aggression here with Queen Nine of Spades. He certainly hasn't been shy of putting chips in the pot this entire final table. 575. And there it is. Wow. And Saliba gave it up right away. All right, coming up on our final hand of this like one hour free preview. Thing? Let me remind you once again, Sega. 
Because most tournaments I play, no one ever answers. So I should count. So I, I can, I'll be the one dick if I don't. <laughs> um, reminder here, yeah, no use promo code PGCUP23 to yeah. save $20 on yeah, your exactly. annual subscription if Most you do decide do. to sign up for Poker Go. We've got Jeff Platt and Brent Hanks on the commentary there and for I that event. Donnie and I will be back tomorrow with yeah, a yeah. one-hour free preview of the 15K <laughs> yeah. No Limit Hold'em, which promises to have a stacked final table. Given Pins that, buying a little higher, a few of the recreational Speed players may not show up for this what? one, Speed and we've already yeah, seen yeah, exactly. Negranu and Petrangelo near the top of the counts. One day Check out pgd.com for the live reporting. One day that is where you can clock. follow along with yeah, what's to come for tomorrow. And then, of course, keep watching on pokego.com for the one remainder one. of this event. Let's catch yeah. this hand until the very end, and then we will sign off definitively. But I just want to say thanks, everyone, so much for tuning in again. Uh, Ken Owen, congrats again on winning the free sub. Please do hit us up on the email. And then we will hash that all out. And then tomorrow, same rules apply. 500 likes will give away an annual sub, so don't miss it. Join us again for the free stream. And there it is. Moreno picks up this pot with King-10 suited. And on that note, my name is Rem Korinkama. Follow me on Twitter and Donnie Peters alongside me as well. We'll catch you guys tomorrow.